Good morning, everybody. Oh, is that, that that's all we got? Like, <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, welcome to Trailhead. I know it's lunchtime, so it's hard to cheer with your mouths chewing and whatnot, but I enjoy awkward moments, so let's lean into it. <laughs> My name's Greg Bennett. I'm lead user researcher for Einstein Bots. And I'm George, the director of UX on Einstein Bots. And today we're here to talk to you about how we're going to go about creating natural, trustworthy chatbots in 10 easy steps. But before we begin, it wouldn't be a Trailhead DX presentation if we didn't have forward-looking statements. I'm sure you've seen this slide many times before, but Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Anything that we show or discuss during today's session may never see release. So please make all your purchasing decisions based on the product as it exists on the market today. I am a total nerd. And like any good nerd, I have a favorite cartoon. That cartoon is Dragon Ball Z. Maybe some of you have heard. There we go. Yeah, so we got some cheers for Dragon Ball. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. And as an adult nerd, I have very much leaned into the opportunity to show off my fanhood of Dragon Ball Z at any given moment, much like on the stage here, but also in chat. I was recently using a chat app where you can send these wonderfully ornate and kind of annoying stickers that take over the whole screen. And when I found out that they had Dragon Ball, C, Dragon Ball Z stickers, naturally, I lost it. I had to get my hands on these stickers. And I was new to the app at the time, so I thought, what better way for me to figure out how to get my hands on these stickers than by using the chatbots, using the app's chatbot. I didn't have to go through some gnarly search. I could just ask the bot, where are the Dragon Ball sticker packs? This is pretty clear, yeah? We think the chatbot responds with, hey friend, have you checked out this week's sticker packs? We're super excited to share them with you. Check out the free stickers. All right, not exactly what I was looking for. Maybe I could have been a little bit more specific. So I repeat myself. I want the Dragon Ball sticker packs. It's got to work this time, right? Yeah, not so much. Hey friend, have you checked out this week's sticker packs? Didn't quite get where I wanted to go. Kind of frustrating. I start to express my frustration and it goes, hey, <laughs> Have you checked out this week's new sticker packs? Not so great. So the chat bot kept me trapped in this loop, didn't really give me anything to work with, and eventually what I ended up doing was I just texted a friend and said, hey, where are the Dragon Ball Z stickers? And I got my hands on what I needed. But as a researcher on chat bots, this, this set my mind on fire. The artificial and robotic nature of the chat killed my trust in the system, essentially, and it hindered my trust in the brand of the company and their ability to deliver against what I'm looking for as a customer. And it turns out that this reaction isn't all that different from what other consumers perceive in terms of having a bad chatbot experience. Digitas LBI found, with, found that with US consumers, 70% of their participants would not use a company's bot again after a bad experience. So we really only have one shot to get this right. In that same study, 60% of the same participants found that bots were robotic and artificial in their responses. I don't think this is a coincidence. The artificial and robotic stilted nature of a chatbot impedes the user's ability to trust the system to deliver. And it also reflects poorly on the brand of the company that the bot is representing. So this, this presents a very unique challenge to us. How can we make sure to create a bot chat that is natural and helpful in a way that gets our customers what they need? So this is our primary objective for your bot. Your customer's conversation with your bot should be natural and trustworthy. So Greg and I are going to share our top 10 tips today. He's going to walk through the best practice, and I'm going to demonstrate how you can apply that directly in our product. All right, step number one starts with opening up a conversation. Every conversation has to start somehow. But if the bot is the one who's talking, it should start with the bot introducing itself as a bot. This recommendation actually came from a story that my father told me. He was chatting with this thing <laughs> for a service-related issue that he had, and then found out maybe, I don't know, several turns into the conversation it, that the, he wasn't talking to a human. He asked, are you human? And it said no. That's not super trustworthy. So the bot should be able to identify itself as a bot, as a machine, in the first turn of chat. So that way you build that transformational and trustworthy layer right at the get-go. Next, the bot should state what it, sh what it can do. 
I have seen research that has shown that users feel actually a tremendous amount of anxiety trying to get the bot to trigger an act in the way that they want it to. And if you leave it just sort of open, like, hello, that doesn't give the user anything to work with. So guide your users, guide your customers, have the bot tell your user what it can do outright in the beginning. You can use a menu to say, here are the kinds of things I can help you with. I can help you change your flight. I can help you book a meal. I can help you cancel a ticket. Whatever the bot is intended to do, that is what it should state in the beginning. The bot should also understand various ways of phrasing things. So hello, hi, hey, uh, howdy. These are all different ways of greeting a person. And we don't always say the same thing in every conversation in the same way every single time we talk to someone. So if I say hello to the bot and it understands me, but then I say hi and it says, sorry, I don't understand, that's a terrible experience. So the bot should be primed and ready to understand variation. It's a natural part of human conversation. How do we do this in the bot builder, George? Thanks, Greg. All right, so this is the Einstein bot builder. It is a declarative tool that allows you to teach your bot to converse with your customers. Let me give you a quick tour of how this works. What you're seeing here is our pre-built pizza bot. It's designed to take orders and track orders. On the left-hand panel, these are your dialogues. These are essentially your bot skills. From welcome to order status, this is how you manage those skills. In the center is your canvas. This is where you can script your bot's message or have your bot ask a question. And as you're building your conversation, you can test that in the preview panel right here. So you can ask your bot and see what that feels like. As you're building the dialogue, you want to train it to understand all the variations your customers may have. So in the dialogue intent, this is where you can input all the different ways your customer would say a phrase to trigger this intent. And as Greg mentioned, you want to set your user's expectation. So in this example here in the main menu, at the very bottom here, those are predetermined paths that you can assign for your users to take. All right, step number four, the bot takes turns with the user. Conversation as a human behavior is fundamentally about turn taking. If only one person is talking in the conversation, it's not a conversation. It's a monologue or maybe a talk like I'm giving right now. So the bot needs to be able to leave space for the customer to respond, parse what's being said, and uh, give the next course of action in the conversation. Related to that is step five. The bot leaves time for the user to read what it has said. We have two examples here on the screen. The top is the bad example, where the bot just blasts you with a ton of information. And then the customer ends up all the way at the bottom of the chat, and they have to scroll up and figure out what's going on. They have to read what's been said already. Not a super great experience. It would be the equivalent of if you were talking to someone and they just didn't take a breath. You couldn't get a word in edgewise. That's not natural. It's not helpful. The good example is where the bot takes a pause. You can see the little ellipses. It has, it gives the user a moment to read what's being said already. Leverage the bot builder's capabilities to allow your bot to create this very natural and uh, trustworthy cadence with your users. All right, so turn taking is actually quite easy in the builder. Within each dialog, you can set up a question and define the type of answer you would expect your user to provide. So let's do a quick demonstration on how to set up this back and forth engagement with your bot. So we're looking at the recurring order dialog here. We're going to set up a few questions. So the first question we're going to ask, how many pizzas would you like to order? So you're going to expect a number input. So we're going to validate the answer with a number entity. And we're going to store the customer's response in a variable, a pre-filled pre variable that we have here called pizza recurring. But you also want to give your customers some options. So in static choices, you can set up a few menu options for your customers. But they can always type in respond. All right, so let's follow that, that up with a second question. Let's have the bot ask, how often would you like to reorder? Now, we're going to expect a text input response. So we're going to validate this with a text entity. And we're going to store this in a variable. And we're going to, the pre-made variable is called reorder cadence. So let's give our users some options again. How about once a week? or twice a week. As a best practice, you want to reconfirm what the users picked. So let's follow that up with a message to restate the order back to the customer. 
And with the message, we can actually reference variables that we stored in the question. So your customer may have picked one, two, three, or four, or once a week, but we can use merge syntax to reference those variables and repeat what they just said to the bot. <coughs> Excuse me. So here, the bot is just restating the order just to confirm. All right. And once we're done, we're going to save this dialogue. And we're going to activate this bot. And we'll test this conversation. All right, let's pull up the preview panel. And let's test the chat. So here, the bot will give you some options. We're going to pick one of the menu options here, recurring order. And we're going to see the questions that we just created together. How many pizzas would you like? User picks four. How often would you like to reorder? Let's pick twice a week, because this guy really likes pizza. And there you have it. The bot is able to restate the order and summarize the order. So adding a bot delay is actually quite easy. In the overview screen, you can actually, the settings are available for you right here. So by default, we're going to have the best delay time checked. That's at 1.2 seconds. But you have the ability to override this and choose between 0 to 3 seconds. Our recommendation is best delay time, but you're, you can adjust as you like. All right, back to you, Greg. All right, step number six. The bot interprets multiple pieces of information at once. Think about when you're having a conversation with anybody. Do you, and I'm admitting a leading question here, do you ever put one idea per sentence? No, you probably don't. And neither does Astro. We see it right here. I'm Astro, and I live in San Francisco. Astro's not saying, I'm Astro. I live in San Francisco. Oftentimes, the way that we communicate in conversation is with multiple ideas in one sentence using a compound sentence. You should expect that when your customers are interacting with your bot, they're going to do the same thing. So the bot needs to be able to understand and parse this multiple piece of info type of a message. OK, this is what makes bots and conversation design so exciting. Your customers will pr provide more than one piece of information, and your bot should be smart enough to pull that information without asking the same question again. So let's go back to the recurring order dialogue. This is what we just built earlier. Within each question, at the very bottom, there's a setting for recognize and save answer from customer input. This is using NER, name entity recognition. It's the ability for the bot to be able to extract information. So let's test this out. Rather than clicking the menu, going through one question at a time, we're going to just simply trigger that with text. And we're going to give multiple pieces of information to see if the bot understands. So there you have it. The bot's able to skip those questions because it got that information. And that's what makes it very natural. All right, step number seven. The bot apologizes when it can't do something. Apologizing is a very natural and inherent part of a service-related conversation. At some point, your user or your customer will reach the limit of what your bot can do and what it can offer. And that's totally OK. In fact, this happens all the time, even in human-to-human service-related conversation. Think about a time when you called into a service center, and then they had to escalate to their manager because they needed some additional permissions or more information. Same goes with your bot. And in that situation, the bot needs to be able to say, sorry, I can't help you with that, and you know, provide a way forward. And that's step number eight. You have to create a path for follow-ups. Let's think back to my situation with a bot regarding the Dragon Ball Z stickers. I really wanted those Dragon Ball Z stickers. I'm sure you all would, too, if you're fans. How frustrating is it that I got trapped in this infinite loop of, hey, here's some more stickers, here are more, st more stickers. There was no way for me to go forward, no way for me to find the, st the stickers that I wanted, the object that I sought. So after the bot says sorry, it should provide a way for the, for the user to go forward. Log a ticket. You can leverage actions inside of the bot builder to then create that, um, that flow. You can you know, provide the times that your agents are available on the phone if they're not available 24-7. Either way, you should give the user an opportunity to keep going with their request. All right. So every bot comes with a confused dialogue. This is what gets triggered when your bot's not able to understand. And you can customize this any way you like. But here I created a rule to trigger an escalation to an agent when it's available. 
So we're going to ask the customer if they want to talk to an agent in case it fails. In the event the customer do want to talk to an agent, transfer to agent dialog is actually right out of the box. Here you can customize your rules and how you want to route it using Omnichannel. And as a best practice, if no one is available, again, we don't want to create a dead end. Here you can offer some path on how they can connect with your service center. All right, so now we're in the part of the conversation that has to do with winding down. One piece of that is the bot giving and acknowledging gratitude. Think about the last service-related conversation you had. Maybe you went to Starbucks and got a coffee. When you made your purchase, what did they say to you? Thank you, maybe they said thank you for your purchase, or when you went to the barista and then got your coffee, what did you say to them? Thank you, when you received the coffee. The bot should be able to both express gratitude, but also understand when someone says thank you. It would be pretty weird if I said thank you to a bot and it said I'm sorry, I don't understand that. So make sure that the bot is ready to give and acknowledge gratitude as well as respond appropriately to it. And then the final step in building a natural and tr trustworthy bot conversation is the bot should close the conversation. Every conversation has to end somehow. Some people prefer to just walk away without saying anything. That's one way to do it, not super trustworthy. Some people don't know when to take a hint and they just keep talking. You don't want your bot to do either of those things. The bot should know that when a customer says goodbye or that's it, that that's indicating that the conversation should be wrapping up. All right, so we, as a best practice, we recommend in creating the You're Welcome dialogue. And this is what gets triggered when your customer says thank you. And you can teach your bot to understand through the dialogue intent. Here are all some examples of like how your customer may show you gratitude. And as you're building this out, you're going to be able to end the chat with your customers. So train your bot to understand when your customer is actually saying goodbye. The end chat dialogue is also available with every bot. Here we're giving some examples on how to say goodbye. Sayonara, see ya, peace out. And on that note, our goal is achieved. With these 10 steps, you're able to create and design the conversation. Because when it comes to a chatbot experience, it's not just that the bot can call an action or call a variable. It's that your customer, their experience of the bot is the language, it's the text itself. And these 10 steps help you at designing that in a natural and helpful way. And so I call, I call you all to action. Let's continue to blaze trails together. The findings that, and the recommendations that I presented to you here with George, this didn't come out of nowhere. We've drawn from linguistics. We've drawn from feedback from admins and other developers just like you. So I encourage you to participate in Einstein bot research. The link is here. You can also use our fancy Q code if you feel so inclined. And I also invite you to join the Einstein bots trailblazer community where George and I will be lurking, ready to answer questions if you have. And I have one final call to action that I would like to request of you all. I would like you all to join me in applause for my esteemed colleague, George, because it, today it's his birthday. And he is spending his birthday dropping some knowledge on everybody. So happy birthday, George. Best presentation ever. Thank you. And thank you all for your time. Thank you.